Hello and welcome back. I'm Matthew Lay and we're going to continue our study of series circuits. So this uh, presentation is just entitled More Series Circuit. Let's uh, look at the objectives for this lesson. First we wanted to de describe the effect of total resistance by adding a resistor to a series circuit or multiple resistors and uh, describe the effect that that has on the current and on the individual voltage drops. Okay, so we are going to expand to uh, a four resistor circuit here and uh, the uh, series circuit can have any number of components in it. I'm just showing sh four here, but it, it could have a significant number larger than that. But our total current, our total resistance is still calculated by adding up all the resistances. Okay, so our simple statement is resistance is additive in a series circuit. So you add on a resistor to the circuit, you just add that value to get our total resistance. Okay, and then we can again use our resistance, total resistance value and our total voltage value to get our total current value. Okay. So then to get our individual voltage drops, we're still gonna use the same formula. Now this is, a, this is kind of a generic way in mathematic terms of showing the formula for each one of these or any number of these. The, the letter N is gonna represent whatever number resistor you're talking about. So you would substitute one in here and one in there if you're talking about this first resistor over here. If you're talking about the last resistor in this particular circuit, you would say E sub four equals I total times R sub four. Okay, so that's uh, that's what I'm just trying to denote there in that formula. And then of course, all the voltage drops, this is Kirchhoff's voltage law, all the voltage drops have to equal my voltage rise. I only have one voltage rise, I only have one power source here. So this is my voltage rise or my voltage source and these are my individual voltage drops. That's still gonna apply even when we add more components into our circuit. And then the power again is easily calculated by using that common current that we have in a series circuit. All series circuits have one common current that travels through each and every component. And that's why I'm using I total here. But then we can just substitute the resistance value, the, the resistor number. So if we're look, talking about number three over here, we would say R3 and that would be the power dissipated by that resistor. And again, power is additive. We can just add on resistors and we're going to be adding on to the power consumption of this particular circuit. Okay, now here's a new concept, and this is voltage referencing. And we can put these little, these are called nodes, these little A, B, C, these little dots that I have on the screen here. And they're just reference points. Um, you can think about them like uh, street signs at an intersection of a street. Um, the, they're just used to reference where our measurement is being taken, and we're going to see that here. So a point-to-point -point measurement is used to reference between two distinct points, and we named those points A, B, and C. So E, A, B is the point between this point A and point B, okay? So the A here is where you put your red lead, and the B here is where you would put your black lead. I'm showing that here. You see the red lead from the meter goes to A, and the black lead from the meter goes to B. And in this case, we're just measuring across this first resistor here, uh, which I'm calling R1, okay? So that's just gonna be the voltage across R1. So what would be our voltage there? I'm, I don't even tell you the resistance, I just tell you the voltage drop. So our meter here would read 2.2 volts, okay? Um, that's, that's pretty self-explanatory. Now let's take that away and let's look at another reference measurement EAC. So E is voltage measurement. That's the letter that we use to represent voltage in math formulas. This first letter A is where the red lead would go and the second letter C is where the black lead would go. 
So we would have a measurement that looks like this. We would have our red lead on point A and our black lead on point C. And that means that we're measuring across two resistors here. Okay, so Kirchhoff's voltage law is in effect, and that means that we have to sum these two uh, voltage drops together. Well, if you add those two together, we're going to get 5.5 volts. Okay, so we're not just measuring the voltage across any one given resistor. We can measure across multiple components, and uh, then we can denote that by using this nomenclature for these node letters A and C in our subscript here, EAC, is that voltage across R1 and R2. This point-to-point -point referencing is commonly used for component level design and component level repair. Okay, We're going to have a little exercise. We're going to do a worksheet on this. Okay, we can also just pick a reference point on our drawing and then use a single letter and the single letter, the single node letter means it's from that to the reference point and I'll, I'll explain here. So a reference point is used to refer all measurements back to that point and it is a ground uh, symbol. Um, so it's typically used and this is the most typical uh, ground symbol used. So that means that's our reference point. Our reference point is where the black lead of our meter will always go. On your little uh, prototype boards you have a green um, jack that uh, we installed at the uh, beginning of the semester. That is used to reference ground um, and even on your prototype board there's that, this little ground symbol there on your board. Okay. And so that is referenced as ground. That means that all the measurements that are going to, I'm going to list here in just a moment are going to be referenced to that point, to ground. Okay, And that ground point doesn't have to be down here at the bottom. I can move it around, actually. Okay, The ground symbol can uh, be referred to as the symbol that I'm showing here. Or it could be this uh, triangle shape. This is a, a little bit more modern way. This is kind of an older way of doing it. But you'll see it either way uh, when you look at electrical drawings. Okay, so let's look at how we can actually use this uh, referencing uh, nomenclature to uh, denote different voltage levels. Okay, reference measurements are, are usually only have a single letter because we know that the second one is going to be down here at this ground point. In fact, there is no letter associated with this point down here. It's just known as ground. Okay, so E subscript A means that my black lead would be down here on my ground measurement and my red lead would be up here on this, this node A. Well, in effect, that means my black lead is connected to the negative of my power supply and my red lead is connected to the positive of my power supply. So I would be measuring 12 volts in that particular instance. Okay, so now... Again, my black lead would just stay down here at ground, but I would move my red lead down here. Now what I'm doing is I'm measuring across this voltage drop and across this voltage drop. So you have to add those two together. Uh, 3 plus 5 is 8, and uh, 3 plus 6 is 9. So that's where we get the 9.8 volts. It's the sum of those two voltages. That's that Kirchhoff's voltage law again. Those are the sum of my voltage drops, and that's what's going to equal... Um, the, uh, the measurement that I would read for E subscript B. Okay, E subscript C would literally have the black lead down here, the red lead up here on C, and it would just be the voltage drop across R3, which is 6.5 volts. Okay, So you can see how we can use that nomenclature to um, denote different ways of measuring voltages. Okay, let's, uh, let's review an open circuit. I know we talked about this in the first presentation, but it doesn't help to, uh, doesn't hurt to review. Okay, an open circuit is a circuit that has no path for current to flow. Okay, so that is my open. Remember, this is a kind of a broken symbol for a fuse, and that fuse is blown, so it's open. Now, I want to show students 
uh, a great way of being able to test if this fuse is broken or not uh, by using your voltmeter. So you don't have to pull the fuse out. Um, you can just use your voltmeter to uh, determine whether this is actually a blown fuse or not. So when we blow the fuse, um, there is no path for the current to flow, so the current will decrease to zero amps in a series circuit. Now if we take a multimeter and we put it across that broken component, in this case a fuse, the meter should read source voltage. Why would that be? Well, we, we know that when the meter is not connected, we have no path for current flow. Technically, when we put this meter in here, we actually give a small path for current to flow. Our multimeters that we use are 10 mega ohm meters. That means the internal resistance of that meter when we're reading voltage is 10 mega ohms. So it's an extremely high resistance. But when we put our meter across here, that means that that it's like putting a 10 mega ohm resistor across here, and that means we're going to get some current to flow. So a student might think, well, but then you would have a you would have current flow in the circuit, and you'd have a voltage drop here and a voltage drop here. The high, there's a very very high likelihood that this is not a 10 mega ohm resistor, and that's not a 10 mega ohm resistor. They're going to be significantly by orders of magnitude less than the meter itself. So yes, there will be current flow, and yes, there will be voltage drops across R1 and R2, but they are going to be so insignificant compared to the voltage drop that's going to be across this 10 mega ohm internal resistance that 99.9% .9 of the voltage drop is going to happen inside the meter. Yes, there will be you know, 0.1% uh, voltage drop across these resistors when the meter is in the circuit. But in effect, we're going to read source voltage. When we read source voltage, we know that all of the current, when we're taking the reading, is going through the meter. That me that Therefore, that must mean that my fuse is blown. I don't have to pull the fuse out and test it to see if it is blown or not. And this is very handy in the field because a lot of people will suspect that a fuse is blown, but they don't know. Well, if your only method is to pull the fuse out, you might pull it out of a running piece of equipment and you just took the line down um, for no good reason. So I try to teach students to use their voltmeter to test the fuse. And if the fuse is good, we uh, will actually read zero volts or basically zero volts because most of the current's gonna to wanna to pass through the fuse because it has significantly less resistance than the 10 mega ohms of internal resistance. You can kind of see the, the wisdom in making it such high resistance that you're in essence gonna read a very, very, very low voltage and you would know that this is a good fuse. So you don't have to pull the fuse out to, to test whether it's blown or not. We'll have an exercise in shop where we'll, we'll uh, be able to prove this out. Okay, a short circuit. A short circuit is um, conversely different from an open circuit. This resistor right here is shorted. So I have a short across that particular resistor. And we talked about this in the previous slide, in the previous presentation, but since uh, R1 is shorted, all the current's gonna go through the short and not through R1. Technically, there would be a little bit of current going through R1. Um, but it would be so insignificant. 99.9% .9 of the current is going to go through this, this wire, which is you know, very, very low resistance compared to the, the R1 there. Um, circuit current will increase since the resistance, the total resistance of this circuit is decreased. And if this power supply can't handle um, the current that is only resisted by R2, then we would probably get a blown fuse in our power supply, okay? So now, if we use a multimeter to measure across the short, if we do something like this, um, we would actually read zero volts. Why is that? Well, we're, we're measuring, these two are technically in parallel with one another, but all almost all the current's gonna go this way because we're talking about 0.01 ohms of uh, resistance here 
And since it's so low, um, I times R, the effective voltage that I'm going to read here is basically going to be zero. It might be, you know, some millivoltage um, uh, measurement, but it would be, in effect, zero volts. The If this is a 10 volt source, we would basically have 10 volt drop across R2 because that's where all of the resistance or most of the resistance is in the circuit. Okay. Let's review. What will be the effect of total resistance on total resistance when adding a resistor to a series circuit? Okay, if you want to pause the video and then come back for the answer. The total resistance will increase. All we remember, a resistance is additive in the series circuit. So we add a resistor on there. We're going to add the value onto the total resistance and adding. There is no such thing as negative resistor. Um, so we are going to always be increasing our total resistance. What will be the effect of total current by adding the resistor into the series circuit? Okay, again, if you want to pause the video and then you can come back. Okay, the total current will decrease. Uh, so remember, E equals I times R, right? So R increased we just said that in the previous question and e hasn't changed um i'm sorry i said e equals i times r it's i equals e divided by r right so if our denominator increases and our numerator stays the same that means that we are going to decrease our current okay um, and what will be the effect of the individual voltage drops on each one of those resistors okay so a series well, let's, I'll give you a second to pause here. Okay, so let's think about it. In a series circuit, it's a voltage divider. Uh, we, If we had three resistors in the circuit at first, and now we're going to have four, we're going to divide up the, the source voltage four ways instead of three ways. Well, the source voltage didn't change. We just added another way to divide it. So each division would be smaller okay if you have a pie and you cut it in three pieces and you have the same size pie and you cut it in four pieces each piece would be smaller um, when you divide it into four pieces okay so the individual voltage drops will decrease that concludes more series circuits presentation i hope that was helpful and we'll see you in the next video